Before his death, Prince Philip was older than some of the outlets that would report on his seemingly endless stream of gaffes. Having been married to Queen Elizabeth II since 1947, he was the longest-serving royal consort ever, but his legacy isn't spotless. Here's why he had a reputation for stirring controversy. The UK was rocked to the core in March 1996, when a man entered Scotland's Dunblane Primary School and shot a class of 16 children and their teacher before turning the gun on himself. The parents of the kids, who were all aged between five and six, called for immediate changes to UK gun control laws, and support quickly grew. CNN reports that within a year and a half of the shooting, UK lawmakers had passed some of the toughest anti-gun legislation in the world. We will outlaw completely higher caliber handguns such as those owned and used by Thomas Hamilton. Not everyone was in support of tighter restrictions, however. Some Brits were of the opinion that those who owned firearms for sport were being unfairly demonised, Prince Philip among them. Speaking to the BBC, he said, If a cricketer, for instance, suddenly decided to go into a school and batter a lot of people to death with a cricket bat, which he could do very easily, I mean, are you going to ban cricket bats? Anne Pearson, who helped get the Dunblane snowdrop petition off the ground in the aftermath of the tragedy, referred to the Duke of Edinburgh's remarks as, quote, a disgrace during an interview with The Independent. She added, To think of the Queen coming up here and laying a wreath at our school and then hearing her husband say something like this sickens me. In 1979, the Duke of Edinburgh's uncle, Lord Mountbatten, was killed by a bomb that had been planted on his boat by the IRA. In a private letter to actor Lionel Jeffries, written shortly after Mountbatten's death, Philip wrote, Let us hope that the great wave of revulsion against this senseless act of terrorism may yet bring a change of heart in those that believe that violence and brutality are the only solutions to their problems. The Duke of Edinburgh's admirable stance in the letter makes his reaction to meeting 15-year-old Army Cadet Stephen Menery in 2002 all the more baffling. Menery was partially blinded by an IRA bomb, a fact that the prince appeared to make fun of during a tree-planting ceremony in London. According to the Daily Mail, when Queen Elizabeth asked the brave teen how much of his vision remained, her gaff-prone husband butted in and apparently said, not a lot, judging by that tie. Menery's mother told the Daily Mail she was left, quote, gobsmacked by the comment, adding, The Queen looked like she wanted to plant Philip next to Stephen's tree. Maybe it was a joke to put us at ease, but it was the wrong sort of joke. Astronauts is a pretty standard reply when you ask a 13-year-old what they want to be when they grow up. But Prince Philip's comeback when Salford schoolboy Andrew Adams revealed this ambition to him was far from ordinary. According to Adams, the razor-tongued royal reportedly told him that he, quote, could do with losing a little bit of weight if he was serious about going to space. The teen told the Daily Mail, I felt like crying, but I had to keep a strong face. He thinks he's special because he's married to the Queen, but I think he should be more careful about what he says. The mocked schoolboy's mum was equally unhappy when she found out what had happened, telling the tabloid, I couldn't understand why someone of that calibre should make such a distasteful remark. I think people are very tolerant of what they go on tolerating. It's ghastly things. Adams later told the Manchester Evening News that he had changed his mind about becoming an astronaut following his encounter with the Duke of Edinburgh, declaring, I've got my heart set on becoming an actor. Political correctness is not something that Prince Philip is known for, as workers at one electronics factory in Scotland can attest to. When the Duke of Edinburgh accompanied his wife on a tour in 1999, on-site sources told The Independent that when the royal noticed a poorly maintained fuse box, he told the people showing him around that it looked, quote, as though it was put in by an Indian. Unsurprisingly, Philip's words caused widespread uproar. Kumar Rashid of the National Assembly Against Racism condemned the remark, saying, This sort of thing is of great concern to us because people expect the royal family to set an example. The backlash was so great that Buckingham Palace did something it rarely does, issued a swift apology. The Duke of Edinburgh regrets any offence which may have been caused. With hindsight, he accepts that what were intended as light-hearted comments were inappropriate. For his part, Prince Philip would later claim that his remark was actually a mental mix-up rather than a racist joke. 
The Hindustan Times quotes him as saying, I meant to say cowboys. I just got my cowboys and Indians mixed up. The Royal Variety Performance is a British tradition that stretches back well over a century, created as a way to raise funds for the Royal Variety Charity. The first show took place in 1912 when Queen Elizabeth's grandfather, King George V, was on the throne. In recent years, the Royal Variety Performance has been associated with the TV show Britain's Got Talent, the winners of which are given the chance to perform their act in front of the Queen at the event. This was a dream come true for members of the dance troupe Diversity, though their experience was marred by yet another gaffe from Prince Philip. During an appearance on Soccer AM, comedian Jason Manford said the Duke of Edinburgh made things awkward backstage when he asked the multi-ethnic group if they were all related. According to Manford, it was one of those moments when you just think, no. He goes, are you all one family? Have you come over for this show? I thought, no, they're from London. They've done the same journey you have. A lot of pressure this show. It's a lot of pressure, uh, as you can imagine. This wasn't Philip's first gaffe at the Royal Variety performance either. Per the Daily Mail, the Queen's husband was reportedly overheard saying, quote, I wish he'd turn the microphone off during Elton John's performance in 2001. When Pope Benedict XVI arrived in the UK for a state visit in 2010, it was a big deal. This was the first time the head of the Catholic Church had been to Britain in decades, and everyone involved wanted to make a good impression, which is why there was a sense of trepidation when it came to Prince Philip. The Pope's visit was to include a meeting with the Queen, and that meant the Supreme Pontiff was going to be exposed to her notoriously offensive husband. Luckily, the Duke of Edinburgh dropped his inevitable gaffe before the religious leader arrived arrived at Holyrood House, the royal family's official residence in Scotland. Philip was among a group of VIPs assembled to meet the Pope at the Edinburgh Palace, and he decided to have a little joke with some politicians as they waited. The royal reportedly noticed that Ian Gray, the leader of the Scottish Labour Party at the time, was wearing a tartan tie, and decided to ask Annabel Goldie, who was Gray's Conservative Party counterpart, if she had a, quote, pair of knickers made out of this. Sources told The Guardian that Goldie saw the funny side, but the palace refused to draw on the incident, saying, We don't comment on private conversations, and this would come into that bracket. Prince Philip has always had something of a complicated relationship with Australia. He became the country's highest-ranking military officer, in a ceremonial sense at least, in 1954. But in a private letter from the 1960s that was later auctioned, the Duke of Edinburgh criticised Australians at large for, among other things, showing a, quote, almost excessive gratitude towards the United States for its aid during World War II. When he visited the country with his wife in 2002, it was the native inhabitants that he left gobsmacked. Queen Elizabeth's husband made headlines back home and around the world when he reportedly asked the owner of the Japukai Aboriginal Cultural Park if his people, quote, still throw spears at each other during a now infamous meeting. A man named William Brim, described as a successful Aboriginal entrepreneur by BBC News, answered, no, we don't do that anymore. The palace claimed that the comment had been taken out of context, and so did one of the indigenous performers from that day. Warren Clements told ABC Far North, We had royal fever, so we said, let's go out the back and throw some boomerangs and spears and hopefully we'll get a glimpse of them as they come down. They waved and we were showing off. I think Prince Philip took that in and that's why he said it. When Eva Fielding Jackson of the British Deaf Association took a group of teens to an event in Wales in 1999, she was thrilled to see Prince Philip in attendance. She approached the Duke of Edinburgh and asked him if he would like to meet the equally excited youngsters that she was with, which he apparently had zero interest in doing. According to Fielding Jackson, Queen Elizabeth's husband pointed to a nearby speaker playing Caribbean music. She told The Guardian, He said, Deaf? If you are near there, no wonder you are deaf and he walked away. He was not joking. Fielding Jackson was absolutely furious about the snub, and the teens in her care were left stunned. Neil Roach, who was just 17 at the time, said that the Duke should, quote, have shaken our hands and shown us some respect. Coming so soon after the death of Princess Diana, who was a patron of the British Deaf Association and was beloved by the community for learning and spreading awareness about British Sign Language, Prince Philip's off-the-cuff comment was perceived as particularly galling. 
Queen Elizabeth II embarked on her Diamond Jubilee tour in 2012 with her husband in tow. With the couple travelling the UK and interacting with regular people, it seemed like only a matter of time before Prince Philip put his foot in it, and he did just that when they stopped at Bromley in Kent. The locals were clearly thrilled to receive the royals, though one 25-year-old council worker got way more than she bargained for. Hannah Jackson decided to wear a red dress with a zip up the front to the event, and when it caught the attention of the Duke of Edinburgh, that dress would become front-page news. One attendee told the Daily Mail that Prince Philip left a nearby officer in stitches with the gag that he made, saying, The policeman was standing in a council lineup along with this girl looking pretty in a red dress, and I had to ask him exactly what he'd said because he was laughing so much. He told me the Duke had said, I would get arrested if I unzipped that dress. Critics may have been appalled at the prince's reported behaviour, but Jackson herself apparently didn't think it was a big deal. The events that I have attended to mark my diamond jubilee have been a humbling experience. At the time Prince Philip decided to offer his opinion on the topic of reincarnation back in 1988, his comments were played off as just Prince Philip being Prince Philip, but they seem all the more controversial in the age of the coronavirus. During an interview with Deutsche Press Agenteur, the Duke of Edinburgh reportedly said, In the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus to contribute something to solving overpopulation. What do you see as the biggest challenges in, in conservation? Yeah, the, the growing human population. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip spent much of 2020 isolating in Windsor Castle amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Majesty magazine editor Joe Little told the Press Association that it provided, quote, an opportunity for them in their later years to reconnect. They both received their first coronavirus vaccinations in January 2021. The following month, the 99-year-old Duke was admitted to hospital after feeling unwell and was found to have an unrelated infection. The palace released a statement saying, He is comfortable and responding to treatment, but is not expected to leave hospital for several days. Prince Philip was released from the hospital in March 2021, but passed away a few weeks later on April 9th. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.